Rare Lego. What is Rare Lego? Why is Rare Lego? Who is Rare Lego? Why do you buy Rare Lego? Will you please stop buying Rare Lego so it's not as expensive so I can buy Rare Lego? I've noticed some inaccurate use of vocabulary as of late. Let me fondle you with a little bit of truth. You are not an entrepreneur just because you're selling Bale Organas at a super premium on Instagram. It's not going to the moon because it's not rare. So often people are inflating prices for no other reason to make a quick buck. It makes sense, but it makes the rest of us suffer. Because of LEGO's long and everlasting history and the perceived value of these sets or minifigures, a lot of people get the wrong idea of what something's truly worth. Your value system is improper and incorrect. I'm here to instill new values so you're not wasting so much time and money on things that are are just not worth it. Unlike other collectibles such as Pokemon cards, the rarity and grading system isn't necessarily there for LEGO. Some people get minifigures, some people get sets. Some people only get sets with specific logos on them like Blockbuster or a and Fortunately for all of those that are new to the rare and collectability world of LEGO that don't really know that much, I have created a tier system to help you better understand if you're wasting your money or not. Baby's First LEGO is the very first tier of LEGO collectability. This is where you're gonna find anything that was retail or on shelves in any significant significant way. Just because it's old doesn't mean it's special. Like me. Retail minifigures, your Cloud City Boba Fett's Phase 2 Captain Rexes, or 2007 Umbridges. They might be uh, coveted, but they're not rare. All of these were manufactured in the tens of thousands, if not some of them hundreds of thousands. They're very common, even though they're very expensive. Next category on the tier is Oops. Oops is filled up with a bunch of things that you could just find yourself randomly coming across one day, like a misprint. You didn't really try to find it, you just did find it. Another example is an overshot, kind of like a short shot, but instead of not enough plastic that went into the mold, too much plastic went into the mold and it spilled over like a muffin top. And much like an overshot, short shots are the exact opposite of muffin tops. Another one that's not as common, but still pretty common, are marble bricks. They don't find their way out into the wild too often, and when they do, they're usually very old, or someone in the factory made a few extra to grease up the wheels of his own personal finances. Lastly, we have mismolded, and you might be confused as to what these are. It's just parts that weren't molded properly, and they have a slight bend to them, or there's some weird angle or warp in them. I guess warped would be a good, warped parts would have been better. The next category is, aw, that's cute. Aww. Aww. The things you'd find in this category are things that people know about, and they are rare, no doubt about it. They're pretty rare with only a few thousand being made, if not less, but, Everybody knows about them. It's it's not that cool when anybody can just go spend a few grand and get one. Mr. Gold is probably the most well-known example of this. Even though you could find it in a retail set, chances are not high that you would find the one, and we only know of 5,000 that are made. Another example is San Diego Comic-Con figures and sets. They're very cool and very exclusive, only in the reaches of a few hundred to a few thousand. But again, everybody knows about them. What's so cool if everybody knows that you have a Donald Duck Deadpool? Is it that unique to be rare? The last example on our list is the 30th anniversary C-3PO. There are about 10,000 of these out there. The next tier is, I'm something of a collector myself. Now the things in this tier aren't as well known, but they are definitely more rare than anything beneath it. At the bottom of the tier are internal parts. These parts are necessarily that rare, but you can't come across them randomly. A good example of this are the exclusive parts model builders at Legoland get. They're usually unique colors that we wouldn't see in a set. Sometimes they do come out in retail sets later on, but it's not that common. Another example are 3D printed parts. These rarely, if ever, get out. They're most often thrown away after they're done using them and they have the official parts made. Sometimes LEGO employees will keep them and they do fall through their personal collections, but it is a very rare oddity. Test molds are the ones that make it past the 3D pr uh, printed parts part. Often though, these are made in large manufacturing batches that an employee does legally to sell and make a few extra bucks. The last one is concept parts and they're similar to 3D printed parts. They were made out of different materials like clay or just uh, softer plastics that were molded into different shapes to try to get an idea of where the part would end up. Wacky and Wild is our next tier and as the name suggests, these are either wacky and or wild. Store opening promos might be the best example of things in the wacky and wild category because they will do anything and everything. It might not even be an official LEGO thing. Sometimes they'll do exclusive minifigures with the store's information printed on the back. Other times they'll do a room card key to the new modular only in China. 
They are great, but sometimes not all of them, and even more often than not sometimes, they are a pain in the butt to get. These aren't just GWPs that come out for the entire world that anybody can get. These are almost always exclusively to store openings or other events that they're running. Another one that might be known to you if you watch YouTube videos, which I hope you're, you're watching, is an influencer promo. More often than not, there's nothing internal that's exclusive. None of the parts or minifigures are there that make it any different from any other ones. The packaging is always unique. You will never find another Scooby-Doo box that looks like Scooby-Doo that's also Lego branded. And then when they do have Lego exclusive things in there, it's oftentimes nothing too crazy, but how else are you gonna get the golden guns that Tracer carries? You're not unless you're some sort of influencer or buddies with the one that's willing to part. Finally, our manager conference related items. Most of the time these are just minifigures that are extremely exclusive and rare. We don't have a solid number for any of the sets or minifigures that come out from these conferences. We do know it's significantly less than anything like San Diego Comic-Con figures or Mr. Gold. The qualifications to receiving one of these minifigures or kits are way higher than the average one. You have to be a manager at a Lego brand retail store or at least someone in the corporate level and then invited to one of their corporate conference meetings in Texas that they have once a year. And if you were thinking that was a bit of a tedious headache to get into, well, there are ones higher in the you'll never have them category. While theoretically anybody can be a manager at a Lego store, it's a very hard job to get, I know. At least there is a way to achieve that status, that very coveted status of retail brand manager. The first one on here, which anybody has a chance to receive, but very few people will, are giveaways. Outside of events that they have at specific locations or launching of new product, giveaways are most commonly found nowadays in the VIP program. They might not be that exclusive, but there is a signed figure in an acrylic case, so it does make it a bit more exclusive than others. Unfortunately, these are limited to five or less, sometimes just one, so the chance of you getting it is not very high. The next one is the Inside Tour. This is another lotto one where Theoretically, you could win to get inside of it, but you have to jump through a lot of hoops. For those that aren't aware, the Inside Tour is a program LEGO offers where you and a few other guests can go and have a very personalized tour and interaction with developers, designers, and other LEGO members and employees in Billund. These groups, however, are very, very small. Sets that come from the Inside Tour usually stop around the 200 mark of how many are made, and if you're lucky enough to get one, you can sell it for a couple thousand dollars. Metal Bionicle parts would be the next one on the list, and these are, just as they say, Bionicle parts that are made of metal. There aren't a ton of them out there. The few examples I'm aware of are discs or Bionicle masks that were made out of platinum. Similar to Bionicle parts, but completely different, are the metal mini minifigures. Metal minifigures are almost exclusively Star Wars. There are a few odd examples like the sterling silver skeleton keychain, but all of them have the same thing in common, that they are expensive as balls. These figures aren't super compatible with LEGO because they're warped and they don't necessarily fit the system all that well, but they're all worth a cool thirty to forty thousand dollars if you have that money or if you know someone that will sell one to you. Most of the world stock that I'm aware of all belong to a billionaire in Scotland, so good luck getting your hands on them. One odd to this list that is unique in its own right is the woo prop from the LEGO Ninjago movie. It was made out of wood and it made an appearance in the movie. I think there are only three made. Jackie Chan got his dirty little fingers all over him. It's $100,000. It's estimated value is $100,000, but it's, that's easy to get if you're the billionaire in Scotland. And finally, for the rarest item I have for all of you today, the Jupiter figures that go way up here. Just their perceived value of material cost is exceptionally high. If you know the cost of space grade aluminum or how to acquire it or forge it, then you can get your own figures like this. These figures will never be seen by another human in the rest of human history because they are currently orbiting Jupiter and are going to burn up in the next few years. But rumor has it there is a second copy out there that's presumably owned by either Lego or NASA or maybe some weird co-parenting thing that they have going on and NASA gets it on the weekends and Lego gets it during the week while they go to school so it kind of balances out. This list however is a little bit wonky. The Jupiter figures we don't know if a second copy exists and with the copy we do know exists about to burn up it, it doesn't really belong on here so no one can ever get it. It's not a collectible it's going to be ash. And while misprint figures are able to be acquired by just about anybody as long as they open up a unique set their value is a bit higher because there is demand for really bad misprints, so it should be more up in here, in this area. And while test molds, constant parts, 3D printed parts, and internal parts are rarer than most things below it by just sheer lack of um, parts out there, they're not desirable in any way. No one goes out and buys them. It should be somewhere down 
in this area. And with Comic-Con figures, Mr. Gold in the 30th Anniversary 3CP, or any other examples that would be in this area, they're very desirable. There might be a crap ton out there compared to the things above it, but people want them a lot more because they're actually known about, and to be honest, they're cooler than Zack the Lego Maniac. But then you have things that no one knows about. That, that card I mentioned earlier, no one knows what that is unless they are Chinese in China a month ago. Same kind of goes with the influencer promos. No one cares about the box. Most of us throw those away. So they should be thrown away with the rest of the babies. Wait, manager conference figures are expensive. They are exclusive and there are some cool ones, but only half of them are even known about or cool. No one wants the, the backpacker, so like this one should stay here. The manager cup part <laughs> should be there. But where's the tape? You used it all. But the inference figures or sets that no one really knows about, they're, they're expensive, but who cares? Same with me metal bionicle parts. No one likes bionicle, otherwise it would have come back the third or fourth time. Seriously, no one likes bionicle. That's why it deserves to be with vintage parts, because unless you are above the age of 65, no one gives two craps about your chipper truck army. <laughs> <laughs> Retail minifigures, however, are super coveted. You have 14 year olds worldwide trying to pump them the numbers up. I'm sorry, what if they're, what? The quote is to the moon. It should be somewhere down here, not in shot, because people don't, because people don't care about them in any significant way. Same with short shots. There are like three pictures online to find those. Those don't belong up here. Overshots, I've only seen one channel on YouTube actually talk about them. Look up Overshot. You get some weird images, but they're not Lego. Giveaways, they are some sweet things, but most of the time, everybody forgets about them. But have what kind of cousin? <laughs> no one wants a signed Will Arnett figure. The Will prop is metal, that's not even Lego. Honestly, I'm something of a collector myself, was just a meme, and it, it's not really a real category. I was just trying to name them, and so it seems like it was funny, but it was never funny to begin with. And then this line should just go away entirely. With this line gone, these two kind of merge together into one big, Aw, that's oops category. Oh. <laughs> now that these are all big one oops categories, you should probably rank them uh, uh, in a way that makes more sense so they are more rankable. Things like misprints are definitely in the all of that category, as well as marble bricks. Mismolded parts, really no one knows existed. I thought I just bent a part when I pulled it out of a box, so it's not really that rare. I'm probably the only person that pays attention to that. Internal parts, um, now um, upon second consideration, their value is really not there. And if you know someone that works at Legoland, test molds, Lego employees don't care about them, so neither should we. Concept parts, Lego employees don't care about these, so neither should we. 3D printed parts, Lego employees don't care about these, but there was one in the inside tour set, so it should be up here. Honestly, not all retail minifigures should be considered the same thing. Like, yeah, uh, people want Captain Rex, but not everybody wants Pre Vizsla, but it is $250, so it should be a little bit higher because Really, those 14 year olds are not gonna be able to afford $250. At least they shouldn't, because then that means they're making more than I am, and I'm not 15, and that's just not fair. Honestly, vintage parts aren't even worth anything. So there you have it, folks. That's how you tell the proper value of a rare item in Lego. And the collecting isn't really that hard, as long as you know what you're looking at. 